Ah, this is brilliant. After all these years of hard work, struggle and strife, I've finally got what I've always craved. I've been given control of the healthcare budget. Finally I can make a difference. I just want to do my absolute best for all the patients, and for the public health. Hello Minister, welcome to your new office. Aha! You must be Miss Moneybanks. I've heard a lot about you. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Minister, I have the first decision that needs your sign off. There's a new treatment available for cardiovascular disease. Clinical trials show it's better than the current standard of care. Will we pay for it to be available in the National Health Service? Buy it. That's a no-brainer. Anything that improves outcomes for the patients is worth buying. Minister, there's a new treatment available for diabetes. It gives better control of blood glucose levels. Excellent. We must buy it. Minister, there's a new treatment for advanced breast cancer. Buy it. Minister, there's a new treatment for prostate cancer. Buy. Osteoarthritis. Buy. Hemophilia. Buy. Low back pain. Buy them all. Oh joy. My public are going to be so healthy. Minister, there's a new treatment available for leukemia. It extends survival by 12 months. That's brilliant. We should definitely buy that. But Minister, there's a bit of a problem. What is it, Miss Moneybanks? Well, we've run out of money. The health budget has run out. Oh no. How has this happened? What are we to do, Moneybanks? Well, Minister, given that we've got a fixed budget, I think we need to think more carefully about which treatments we should reimburse. We can't just buy everything. We need to think about value for money, and cost effectiveness. Money banks, that makes perfect sense. I wish we could just buy everything, but we can't. But how do we decide which new treatments are the most cost effective? Well, we could only really do it if we could compare the effectiveness of all the different treatments based on the same outcome measure, some generic measure of health-related quality of life. But is there such a thing? Well yes, there's the quality adjusted life year. But we'd need to take costs into account too, to make sure we were going to get the most out of our budget. And we'd need to compare each new treatment to the standard care that they are designed to replace, so that we could properly consider opportunity costs. Go on. We could calculate the costs and quality associated with each new treatment compared to the standard care. That would give us an incremental cost effectiveness ratio, a cost per quality gained. Then, when new treatments come along, we could compare their ISA to the ones of the treatments we are already paying for and decide whether the new treatment represents a cost-effective use of our budget. If it did, we'd have to stop paying for something that we're currently providing, and start paying for the new treatment. If we're trying to maximize the health of the population, then that kind of approach could work. Money banks, I don't like the sound of rationing healthcare in that way. But you're right, we can't pay for everything, and some of these new drugs are extremely expensive. We need to try to maximize the health of the nation given the money we've got. Your cost-effectiveness approach might be the best we've got. The most important thing is that it's evidence-based and it's scientific. Once we have this quality measure up and running it sounds simple enough. I approve. <laughs>